All right, welcome again to Hydro the Account. If you haven't subscribed, you can do that for regular updates, guys. Okay, so uh, we can start now. We have seen what CAPAM uh, is like. We have seen that CAPAM actually includes systematic risk, which we call beta. Now, as for equity, if you need the cost of equity, you would have to use this one, this figure called equity beta. So what is equity beta? What is asset beta? And actually, what is debt beta? This is what we're just going to explore here. So when we're told equity beta, not be very careful here. When we're told about equity beta, we simply mean geared beta or levered beta. Let me tell you one thing. Beta is the measure of risk, all right? If beta is the measure of risk, it is you, it usually consists of business risk but it can help both business risk and as well as financial risk. So if you just see the word equity beta, just know that we are speaking of business risk, but also of financial risk. These are the two main points you have to note. See equity beta, we are speaking of business risk, but also we are speaking of financial risk, all right? Business risk is obvious, it's just the risk of operations, right? When doing business on operations, actually you incur, you, you encounter a lot of risks. But as for financial risk here, we just mean the use of debt. If you just use debt as a source of finance, you know debt must be repairable, but equity cannot be, cannot be repaired. Actually, it's just a matter of directors to decide. But actually, equity is not repairable, but debt is repairable, is mandatorily repairable. So that's why we say, if you have equity, you have no financial risk. So a company that is fully equity financed has no financial risk and it would never have equity beta, all right? So uh, this is what we, we do. And it can be expressed, let's say, in terms of debt to equity ratio. So it can be ungeared, you know, by saying geared beta, we mean that we have used debt and so there is this financial risk. And that's why we call it geared beta. So it can be ungeared. By saying ungeared, we mean it. this debt, impact can be removed. This, if we remain this financial risk here, you remain in the business risk alone, and this is usually called the asset beta. That's why we say it can be ungeared to remove the financial risk and obtain business risk. So if you ungear it, you remove financial risk, you remain in business risk alone to obtain business risk only, and thus obtain asset beta. So simply speaking, asset beta is obtained by removing the financial risk from equity beta, just like that. What is asset beta now? Asset beta is called the ungeared or unlevered beta, beta A. So as I just told you, this one uh, is after eliminating financial risk and so it contains only business risk. That's why we say it includes only business risk. Now, if you need to add it back, maybe to, you take it back to equity beta, we say that it can be regeared. It has no gearing because it has no financial risk, but it can be regeared by adding financial risk to it. So by, by it can be regeared to add back financial risk to business risk and that obtain equity beta. Because if you add financial risk to business risk, you would have both business risk and financial risk, and this one is called equity beta. So it's just that one. All right, and so the Kappa model uses a beta factor to measure the shares volatility. I think we have just seen it in the previous video, all right? So about the debt beta now, actually there's no much concern here because uh, this one is usually very low. So uh, for this moment, I think we should just ignore it. No time to waste on this one. So it is usually ignored, right? Because it has a low value. And sometimes you may find that debt is much lower compared to equity, so usually ignore it. But it itself is very low. All right, now this is the relationship between these two, three betas. This one is a relationship. Asset beta, simply speaking, we say this is the asset, so it is a combination of the two sources of finance. Asset beta, as you see it here, asset or security beta, is the combination of these two securities. I mean, it is a combination of these two sources of finance. So equity as well as debt, it is a combination of the two. So as you see here, we have I have equity beta, but here I have debt beta. But actually, these figures here have been weighted using their values. So equity beta times value of equity beta plus debt beta times the value of debt beta. But this value of debt beta should be after tax. You know, when speaking of debt, actually debt has a tax advantage. So we remove that one. 
over the total value. So yeah, it's just equal to beta equal to value plus value of data after tax, just like that. But usually, since usually equal to beta, that beta is ignored. If you ignore, if you just ignore that beta, you would say that for the low values of, of that beta, this that beta would be equal to zero. So if you put zero here, this formula of asset beta can be written as follows: equal to beta over one plus the ratio of, of debt to equity times one minus tax rate. We call this an gearing. Actually, we have changed the equity beta to asset beta, but also we can we can do the gearing by obtaining the equity beta. If you make the subject here, we'll say equity beta equals to asset beta times this one, and we call this regearing. Now let's go and take a look at an example on how to do this. All right, this is hybrid accounts. You can subscribe for regular updates if you have done that. You can share to others so that they also learn. Actually, I appreciate much you guys. Thank you very much. All right, let's take a look at this example three. We just saw two examples previously, and now we are on the third example. Jen's company wants to venture into a new business and had thus issued 10 million ordinary shares with 40 million dollars and 8% bonds with 50 million dollars. So there are neat new sources of finance that is equity and debt of such values into a new venture, into a new business with a new business basis. It has identified a company in the same business area as its new venture, Suro Company. The equity beta of Suro Company is 1.5 and the company has an equity market value of 8 million while its debt is 25 million worth. Now you can get something here. This gents wants to invest in a new business, but investing into a new business, actually, you, when let's say you need to obtain the cost of equity, you'd have to know the business risk, but you'd not know the business risk of that business, but you have identified a surrogate company, actually, this company here, which is called Suro, and you are given the information about Suro, you are given the equity beta of Suro. You know, Suro is already operating, so it had that business risk, but also it has funded itself. Let's say it has an equity beta of this figure here. And the company has an equity market value of 80 million, while it's debt is 25 million. Worth. All right, the question proceeds. The risk free rate of return is 6%, and the return on the stock market is 13%. Corporation tax applicable is 20%. Required now, required. Calculate a cost of equity which could be used in appraising the new project. Now we just need to do this new business. Now we have to determine its cost of equity. Now, as usual, as usual, just determine your value. You need the cost of equity, and this is a formula. So we have the risk-free rate of return, no problem. That is six percent. It's given the question here. We have the return on market is 13%, no problem. But also uh, we have uh, the tax rate, but actually we need the equity beta. Because we have RF, we have we have RM, we need the equity beta. Where is it? No equity beta. The equity beta given here is for sole company. That means this equity beta of this sole company has the business risk in the same, which is the same as what James needs to enter into, but also it has its own financial risk. So what we do, I just use this equity beta, I remove the financial risk from it to arrive at the asset beta, which represents the business risk. And this is the same business that James wants to go. So I can use that asset beta and put then the gearing, regear it back to obtain the equity beta that is relevant for James company. So this is what we do. We have to ungear the solo company equity beta to arrive at the asset beta. That's why I've written get asset beta. This is the formula that we saw. Asset beta equals to uh, equity beta then value of equity. That beta then value of debt net of tax over summation of total values. Here. So since we are dealing with solo company, you have to use the value of equity and the value of debt uh, for this car solo company. So plug in the value there. Equity beta equals to 1.5. Value of equity for this sole company equals to 80 million. Value of debt equals 25 million. But actually, the beta is not given, so we say that it is zero. When you multiply by one minus tax rate, that is 0 0.2. Down here, you plug the values. Uh, you have 80 million here. Value of equity. Value of debt 25 million. Net of tax. All right. After that, actually, you would remain. We will arrive at asset beta of 1.2. And now you can, you have, you only, when looking at this, 
just know what you have. Do not just claim or have as a data. Here I had business risk in this equity beta. I had business risk and financial risk. Now I've eliminated the financial risk. I've remained with business risk of zero. But since James needs to enter into the same business, this business risk should also be applied actually to James. And so I, had, I just have to regear it to obtain the equity beta. So the same formula, I just use, you just use the four, same formula here, but now you have the asset beta already is 1.2. So I put the 1.2. I need the equity beta, which is what I need now times value of equity now for James company. Equity for James company was 40 million, it's here, plus the debt is not given, so we say that it is zero times 50 million, which is the debt, which is the debt value here, net of tax over equity value 50, 40 million plus debt value here, 50 million net of tax, that is one minus 0 0.2. So uh, if you simplify matters here, zero times these figures, you have zero, and 40 times you remain is 40 times equity beta over 50 million times 1 minus 0 0.2 equals 40 million plus 40 million will have 80 million. So if you make cross multiplication here, you will have equity beta equal to 1.2 times 80 million over 40 million, and you'd remain actually with equity beta of 2.4. So now I have my equity beta and they can proceed. Okay, so we say cost of equity equals to 6%, which is RF plus beta, which is 2.4 times RM minus RF, so 13 minus six, and I would have 7% times 2.4 would be 16.8% plus six uh, would give me cost of equity is 22.8. So I hope you enjoyed this. And again, if you have subscribed, you can do that for regular days. You can just share to friends uh, so that they can learn. All right, thank you very much. And actually, uh, until next time.